Welcome to Pork Chops and Applesauce. I'm Christopher Knight. A friend recently sent me a YouTube video of Jimmy Kimmel asking folks what GMOs were. As you can imagine, it was hysterical because most folks didn't have any idea what GMO even stood for, yet they stood adamantly opposed to them. Now, GMO, genetically modified organisms, are organisms whose genetic material has been genetically changed using engineering techniques. They have been in existence since the early 1980s, where they were initially used in the advancement of medical science and the safe production of medicines, such as insulin. As for food crops, like corn and wheat, GMO plants, or GM seeds, as they're sometimes called, have been used by farmers for approximately 20 years. Truth is, plants and their plant seed offspring have been modified through traditional plant breeding techniques for hundreds of years. Fruits like today's seedless watermelon and bananas are significantly different than earlier versions of these fruits. You name the fruit or vegetable, from potatoes and pumpkins to oranges and strawberries, today's version is larger and more plentiful than its ancestor from 300 years ago. GMO seeds have been tested more than any other crop in the history of agriculture, with no evidence of harm to humans, animals, or the environment. In fact, some GMO crops are purposely designed to benefit the environment by using water more efficiently or lessening the need of fertilizer. Hundreds of independent scientists and researchers have reviewed the data globally, and all have concluded that the consumption of GMO food is perfectly safe. The organizations reaching this conclusion include the American Medical Association, the Royal Society of Medicine, the World Health Organization, and the National Academy of Sciences. The raging debate over GMO food is very complex. All across the blogosphere, there are GMO opponents voicing varied concerns and making negative complaints about the health of eating GMO foods. But if you drill down, you'll find no fact-based scientific evidence supporting these claims. I always think it's good to put things into perspective. And toward that aim, it's important to ask, why are we having a GMO debate in the first place? Why are we genetically modifying food? The answer is twofold. First and foremost, in the next 35 years, we're going to have to figure out how to produce 70% more food to feed our world's growing population. The equation is staggeringly unbelievable, and getting there is uncertain. But if we don't figure it out, hundreds of millions of people will starve in a hunger and starvation epidemic the likes of which have never been witnessed in any animal species, let alone human. If we allow human populations to grow, there exists an obligation to feed them. Second, GMO crops promise to minimize environmental damage associated with farming. All too often, more farmland means clearing more natural habitats like rainforests and damming up rivers, draining wetlands. GMO crops can help farmers make the most of existing farmland, allowing them to produce more using less land, less fertilizer, less insecticide, and less water. Over the last 20 years, one billion acres of GMO crops have been grown and consumed without a single instance of harm to human health. According to our leading health organizations who've done the scientific research and conducted the health studies, GMOs are safe to consume. As the GMO debate rages on, remember that we've all been living ever more healthy and longer lives. And for more than 20 years, we've all been eating GMOs. We are all proof that GMOs are safe. This is Christopher Knight, Chops and Applesauce.